There's one ingredient I use on almost every single diorama I do. It's so versatile, it's so flexible, it comes in a variety of colours and you can get so many different results with it. I use it to create bases, I use it as earth. Yes, if you haven't guessed it already, it's tile grout. Yes, tile grout. That humble product that many of us already have in our homes. We probably have it in our bathrooms, in our kitchens, but it's so easy to buy. You can get it from a DIY store. You can buy it online. I just got 10 kilos delivered. Yes, 10 kilos, I use that much of it. And I've used half a box already. I love tile grout. That probably sounds a bit weird, but I just adore it. It's the answer to so many of my problems when it comes to modeling, that is. Now, I can't tell you when I first started using it, but I look back at, these are my first videos, but I also look back at my first dioramas ever, and it is all over them. Bearing in mind, this was 20 years ago, it was probably an internet forum or something like that. But back then, I started modeling in model railways, and I did American. And the accepted wisdom was that the best dirt you could use on anything you did was from a baseball diamond. Now I had visions of some 60 to 70 year old men going into a sports field at night and digging up the ground. I, well, for a start we don't have baseball diamonds in the UK, but I was shocked that people were doing this. I found out later you can actually buy it in bags but I kind of like the image of them sneaking into some school in the middle of the night and digging up their baseball diamond just to get the perfect dirt for their diorama. Anyway, when I came to look at it, I needed something I could get in the UK and my soil in the garden is brown, but not everything you want to model is brown. And soil is often very brown because it has loads of organic matter in it, which is darker. But some of the places we model are a little bit more barren and we want a lighter color. So what to do? Well, you could paint it, or you could find a better product. And that's what I did, tile grout. First up, why I love it. Well, it comes in every color from terracotta, this is actually a mosaic one, through to beige, I use this on my beaches or on the Mandalorian, through to black, this is my layout, it's a yard, it's got a lot of cinders, and you can throw some gray in there for ash, all the way through to browns and a huge variety of browns at that. Oh, and did I mention white? Yes, you can use it for snow, though I do recommend dolloping in a little bit of white acrylic to give it a little bit more pizzazz. It can come out a little gray otherwise. I loved it so much, I used five kilos of this quick set waterproof grout. And it's kind of a brown, it does go a bit darker when it's been glued. And I love this. I used it on everything from my layout, just, just anywhere. And I, I used the whole bag up. And when I came to redo it, I couldn't find that product. It didn't, it was out of production. So I had to experiment and I've never found one as well. But up till that point, I hadn't realized there were a couple of flaws with tile grout. One, if you try and put glue and water on, the tile grouts you get in the UK, most of them when you buy them are unsanded, which means they're just cement. If you're gonna mix a paste, which I'll talk about in a minute, then that's no problem. But if you want to sprinkle them on and then spray on glue, you get a lot of balling on the surface, which is not ideal. You can fix it by adding more glue and wet water and then just mopping up the excess and come back when it's dry and sprinkle on a little bit more grout to hide any sins. It's not that bad. But you can reduce your chances of that happening with these simple tips. One, add about a third sand, just fine silver sand, paving sand, not the orange builder's sort, but something that's a bit less colored Add that in and it just opens up the cement a little and makes it easier for the glue and water, the wet water to get in. Two, use wet water. So if you're gonna put glue straight onto a fine powder, no matter what scenery you're doing, it is definitely gonna ball. Wet water has got something like dishwasher rinse aid or my favorite, isopropyl alcohol. I use about a third isopropyl alcohol, two thirds water. 
you put that in there and you spray it onto the surface and it helps the surface tension break down and the glue flow through. As an aside, spraying rather than dripping your glue is much easier to get through the grout if it's balling. Finally, use thin layers. A tea strainer or sieve is excellent for this. You do not want to glue just the top and leave the bottom unglued because it's easy when you knock it for the top to just come off. Now, if you do want to use the tar grout to add quite a lot of thickness, I have a helping hint on this one. Use a tar grout paste. I love this. I recently discovered it in the last couple of years and now I use it on almost everything. More on that in a minute, but first up, a couple of tips. If you're adding dry grout to the side of a slope, add some neat white glue first to help it sit properly. But another great plus point, tire grout compacts really beautifully. And if you roll something like a tire tracked warthog through it in this case, but any real vehicle, you can get beautiful tire marks. If you do a light spray, on top of it, you will just lock it in and then you can put a light spray of glue and then when that's set up you can come back and drip a little bit more glue and it's all perfectly set and you can end up with some amazing results. What's more, if you add gloss effect you get mud or if you add some puddle effects, either some acrylic or epoxy resin or UV resin, then you can get some amazing puddles to go in the bottom of your ruts. But now the pace I've been promising you. The secret ingredient, a lot of secrets this week, the secret ingredient is to add some white glue. If you just use water and tar grout, there's a danger it might crack. The white glue adds sort of a bit of plasticity to it. It makes it less likely to crack and it helps everything just stick as well, just a little bit better. And I mix it in everything from really thin to really thick, depending what I want it to do. But in this, I'm just putting a little butter coat on as a base. I can come back and sprinkle tile grout with the sieve as normal to get the final texture. This paste is an excellent alternative to sculpt mold. If you put enough glue in, then it doesn't crack and you can put it on quite thickly. And I've built up sort of maybe up to half an inch or so using it, probably more if I'm honest. If you put in a lot of sand, you'll get a gritty texture. If you put in more water, you'll get a smoother texture. And while you're at it, don't forget to bury stuff in it, whether it's bits of mech like this or stones. For large dioramas, I often use plaster cloth. And in the past, I would have put a thin skim of sculpt mold on it. Now sculpt mold quite expensive. And although you can get cheaper alternatives, tile grout and white glue is far cheaper. Mix it up into a lovely slurry or paste and just plaster it everywhere. And then when you've covered all your surface, you can go over with that sprinkling of tile grout dry and you'll get the texture that you want for earth. This is a great way to easily cover plaster cloth without spending a fortune. Want a stucco effect building? This is quite a large scale one, but it works in every scale if you leave the sand out. Well, guess what? Yes, more tar grout, it's perfect. I even used it to fill that gap down the middle. Now this could have done with sieving, it's lumpy, and there's a point there, don't forget to sieve, but it worked really well. And you can sand. This is one of the best things about this tile grout. If you put it on, it will sand. Perfect. So out comes the sieve, on goes the tile grout, and I even used a thin white one like a paint to give that bloom you get on Adobe. Talking of paint, don't be scared to actually paint your tile grout. I'm putting a really thin dilute black acrylic, or it might be a dark brown, over these, and I'm using a hairdryer to speed it up. And when that's done, it looks like the damp earth at the bottom of a stream. And a couple more tips to end with. Put your big stones and pebbles on first and put the tile grout round them, and then they'll be sat in the earth rather than on top of it. After you've laid your static grass, Use tile grout to make it look like it's growing through or to tone down that sort of gloss you get, that shine that you get on static grass. It's great around the edges of paths where the grass is just starting to break through and is a little bit worn out and not necessarily doing as well as it should. 
other great uses of tar grout. Splatter some onto your snow and ice for a sploshed, muddy road effect. Don't forget, if you want a tie swing into your ground, you can use tar grout like a pigment. It doesn't even need glue. To be honest, I wouldn't glue it anyway. So you could just spray it with a slight mist of isopropyl alcohol and water, that wet water mix, and it will hold it in place. So there we are, a whole host of reasons where tile grout is my favorite product. Now, I guess it's not for everybody. So if you have a favorite product, please let me know down below in the comments. I'd be intrigued to see what you can't live without when you're modeling. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, subscribe, hit the bell button so you know when I'm coming out with a new video, and I'll see you next time.